Okay, are they on the air now? Or? Yeah. Okay. Well, just so we have it down, so I want to say your whole name. So we will edit it out when we do it, just so I have it on tape. Hi. So say, say your whole names. I'm Lance from the Mumps, and this is Christian Hoffman from the Mumps. And to my right is Elizabeth Seidman. She is our bodyguard, and Elizabeth to my left is Ruth Seidman. And she is also our bodyguard. I'm her bodyguard. <laughs> is there any particular reason why you have two female bodyguards? Well, because you know we need we need those people to carry those extra guitar amps and things around. We don't also, <laughs> also they're very good at, at at pushing the people back that spill out onto the stage when we perform. You know, because the stages in, in this sort of circuit are very very shallow, and everybody's usually falling all over them or passing out. Are you, aren't you afraid of becoming an object of ridicule, having a... Uh, Listen, I was born an object of ridicule. Who cares? That's my message to the world. Are you saying yeah. these girls are bad for our image? No, I didn't say anything. Come on. All right, let's I'm asking you a question. Can you come in the first two rows? Okay. okay. Yeah, right. I want this red and green look nice, so I couldn't wear it. So I can see what's that. Okay. In all seriousness now, well, most of the punk happenings were taking place in the last couple of years, and a lot of violent hostility was coming around with the message of most bands. The Monks seemed to be kind of a band that were enjoying themselves rather than having, you know, uh, a you know, an aggressive reaction. Is uh, that accurate, or? Well, I think that, that that's part of the aspect of Monks has always been to have have a good time with a conscience. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What kind of we're into guilt? Conscience? We're into guilt. Um, uh, well, you know, we we think about everything we do, and since we don't have girlfriends or boy boyfriends for that matter, we have. There's a lot of other things to think about, like cleanliness. So we recorded a single called "I Like to Be Clean," <laughs> and about consumerism and and hard luck. And so we recorded the B side, "Crocodile Tears," and. Um, so now we're we're ba we're basically in having a really a fun time up on stage because we're not the great I'm not Jimmy Page or Robert Plant although they were my parents and um, I think that basically we just get up there and have a good time despite everything all those problems. As a composer, Christian, where do you see yourself in the new wave scene compared to most? You know, do you consider yourself a new wave composer first of all? I think I transcend the new wave. I, I just I think I'm probably the only important writer in the way. He's the embryo way. Yes. No, I, I think that one thing about, you know, the uh, so called new way and all that thing is that whoever is good is going to transcend it and, and, and go beyond it and they're they're not going to be thought of oh this I mean you don't think of the Rolling Stones anymore as being oh they're from Car weren't they that group that started at Carnaby Street or something or and uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live on Carnaby Street in your mind. Do I? <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> hey, you got all the socks in, please. My mom made me wear Are you fashion conscious individuals as performers? Fashion tasteless. I don't know. Uh, what fashion? Uh, we. It's fun to dress up, you know. It's so, so hard to. Uh, go out and wear the kitchen sink and it's much easier to, when you wear crazy things, wear them up on stage. And plus they don't get ruined that fast. And you just wear them once a week as opposed to a lot. But it's hard to say that we're, we're like trying to be part of the fashions that are fashionable in the context of the new wave. Because we never managed that yet, even when we did try. I don't even have a stud belt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, when when punk was going on like the last two years, did you where did you where did you see yourself fit into that whole scene? Did you see, you know did you feel that you were outsiders in the scene or? Uh... Well, we were we had been together before uh, the punk movement had started, and we were in California, and uh, we were too no noisy for Californians. And uh, when we came here, and the punk scene started, we did we still did feel sort of out of it because why did we? <laughs> Well, it's a real difficult question because punk and all the things that went along with it are probably the only interesting things that were happening then and everything that they did was the most important thing at the time for being like brave and going out and making a break from everything that had gone before and not sounding like Peter Franklin and being free to make a lot of noise. But we were never really accepted as part of that because we were too much based on being commercial. We're like bubblegum punk. 
yet you play the same you played the same club circuit yeah. as the punk club did instead of looking for an alternative. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because they were the most interesting bands happening, and I've been able to be associated with anybody. It's better to be associated with them. Yeah. But now it's no way. And that's the club. It's like the new way. There's no way of like the new way. And the new way is the no way. Where do you see yourself going as yourself going as a band? Do you see yourself as pioneers, like you know, or uh, do you see yourself part of a movement that includes other bands at the moment? Mm. Well, I always thought we were doing the most obvious thing, but since nobody else is doing it, we yeah. must be pioneers. <laughs> we must be. Well, what is the thing that you're doing? What is we're the like obvious thing? We're trying to make. Um, like we have very pretentious messages that we want to tell, like every song has this big message, but we try to make it palatable by making it easy to sing along with and to dance to. Yeah. We want and to make all of that stuff like the new wave was uh, angry with, that we're angry with too, enjoyable so that people will want to join and be angry with us in a happy sort of way. What are you angry about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you angry about? Everything. No, we're not angry, we're just interested. He's I'm angry, you're not angry with him. Are you angry? No, he is I'm not angry, angry. don't get me wrong. I'm a good friend of He's a peacemaker. <laughs> He's a peacemaker. No, I think that we're just interested, and in this day and age, being interested in life is sort of like being angry, because everybody is, is so content to just settle, settle down to the norm. I always thought before that everybody had sort of some private philosophy or point of view that they'd like to express, and then you realize and they don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't want to People have a don't. Point and of I view. think that they well, you have points of view. Yes, we definitely. What is your point? Your, your personal point? Well, on any specific thing, you'll have to give us uh, examples and we can yay or nay it. But, um, uh, <laughs> most of the yeah. Well, no, like, uh, I just think that, that what we do is we express, express our feelings about, you know, rock and roll, rock and roll this, rock and roll that. Yes. Life uh, it is a good, good example. I think that we, we try to say, say, you know, speak our minds instead of saying, oh, I'm so mad, or, Oh, I love that girl, blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, I'm really bored, which yeah. doesn't solve Those anything. three points well, of view are Tell me interested. something that you have a point of view about. What is, you know, one thing that you have a point of view about? Um, well, I think, I think that cl the cleanliness, in, uh, because I'm very, I love cleanliness, I must admit, is a good, good example. I think that we, we try to say, say, you know, speak our minds instead of saying, oh, I'm so mad, or, oh, I love that girl, blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, I'm really bored, which yeah. doesn't solve Those three anything. points well, of view are... Well, tell me things. something that you have a point of view about. What is, you know, one thing that you have a point of view about? Um, well, I think, uh, I think that cl the cleanliness in... Uh, because I'm very... I love cleanliness, I must admit. <laughs> uh, and I really like to be clean. And um, I think that, that that's one thing where, where in that song we talk about how you know, cleanliness is an extension of, or, or sexuality is, a, is an extension of it, and how the kids today are, are kind of asexual and stuff, or I ended up being that way. You're and, asexual uh, now? Yeah. And you know, we go, Christian wrote, and it's so right, bored to tears, now there's no experimenting, bland careers, symmetry is unrelenting, but it's safe. <laughs> and within me, genetics convene and dictate that I like. And I think that, you know, no truer words were ever spoken of. Not this <laughs> <in> the Bible says <laughs> so. Do you, are you clean? Are you clean people? Like, yes, I'm wet, but I'm clean. <laughs> and wild. <laughs> okay, uh, do you, do you, okay, do you want everyone to be clean? Hmm? Do you think everyone should be clean? Mm, uh, no, 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 no. I, I think that, well, that when we say things, I mean, all those things are like, a, like if we make a statement like that, hopefully every statement we make is applicable for every situation, suitable for all occasions. So you can take, I like to be clean, you know, it's, it's a big cliche, on as many different levels as you want. But I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. It was more a comment on it's people a are afraid view. to experiment right now. And people are afraid to try anything. And that's like the big American way is safety first. It may not only be American. I don't want to get too political. We have a new song called They Blue avoid the experience. They avoid everything, and I think that's really bad. Do you know the song, Who is the Enemy? Who you say that new song? Yeah, Who Christian wrote this great new song called Who is the Enemy, which we'd like to do for you now. Come on! <laughs> 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 get out of here! You want to slap your fingers? You want to sing it? Go ahead, do it. Uh, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll, wait, well, so what was I going right? to say, though? Something incredibly profound. <laughs> 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 if there's any Addison out there in the audience, please bring them up here. But, um, 
No, I think that I think that the important thing today is the important thing in expression is to explain your point point of view. It's not like you're saying everyone should do this, everyone should it should be like this. But so few people think about what they're doing or why they're feeling things that you don't have to tell everybody else to do it. You just have to say, this is how I feel, and explain it succinctly, and hopefully to music, and hopefully it's short and melodic, and catchy, and people will say, I identify with him. Do you think there are a lot of people out there who do identify with you? Who, who I think that there's a lot of people that have, have a great wealth of private spirit that they've so far negated, and I think that, that, that a lot of people will, will listen to Those to are us. public. Yeah, and I think the, the, those closet thinkers, as they are, <laughs> I think that sooner or later they'll be turned on to our lip. Have you noticed your audience growing? Yeah. When my mom comes and my relatives. They no. keep getting older. <laughs> they keep, yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, these girls are just me high. But um, no, it, it, it has been growing a lot now, especially since the whole punk and then new wave things have sort of been diluted and now it's basically just people who, who are good at, at, at what they're saying and what they're doing. I think that that's, that's the wider scope now. It's not like you can identify everybody immediately as being punk and new wave. I think people are just... But the thing that was good about punk when people took it like... As but it was great, Chris Was that it, had, it was cohesive and it seemed like a movement and then it sort of fell apart and now there's nothing that... I think it's good that when a public can latch onto something to be afraid of or worried about or find novel. And right now there's nothing cohesive about the movement. It's just a bunch of bands and everyone is hoping to be the big band. Are you hoping to be the big band? Well, I always wanted to be the big band. Yeah. At first I wanted to be bigger than the Beatles and now I want to be bigger than ABBA. ABBA is our hero. But I also think it's important for the people to be free and work towards something. We're going to this. What, Christian? Well, nothing. Oh, no, please. No, no. No. He has a million lines. Do, do you find in your band that uh, Lance gets most of the publicity? How does it feel being a composer? And you actually write most of, most of the music, don't you? Uh, wow. So you are, you are actually like the musical force behind the group. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Would you? Yeah. Uh, well, do you resent it at all when Lance gets most of the publicity? I always felt that the lead singer was like supposed to be the front man, and I think that the focus would automatically be on the thing, and I would be someplace else if I wanted to have that kind of focus. But I think that the publicity should come from a point of view of the band yes, as opposed to true. his past, past, which has been a problem. Oh, past. But I don't know what that past was. Actually, I can't remember. I, know, I never told the rest of the band. I never talked about it in front of the B-A-B-I-E-S. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's see, I've got to sound it out. But um, no, it, it, it always makes me feel hideously guilty when you know they'll send a reporter. Does it really make you feel guilty? It about does. It. I mean, because I mean, what the hell? I'm not going to say anything about this. I don't have anything really interesting to say about all that stuff that went before. Yeah, by this time, I'm sure you'd rather be asked what he did last week. Yeah, I mean, I'm much prouder of the things that I've created than, than the things I wore. What Which was basically what I was. What are you usually asked? Are you usually asked about what you're doing now, or are you usually asked no, about what you're doing now? No, well, they always, no, they never ask me about what I'm doing now, but I make sure when they leave, they know more <laughs> about what I'm doing now. But, well, also, they, there's occasions that they'll come in and be real interested in the band and then discover that Lance was once notorious. <laughs> and then they'll sort of completely shift the focus, and so we lose a lot of um, things of because my lips say. Do you talk about that in the group? Do you, I mean, in the group, do you talk about that? We have bitter, bitter fights. Oh what, oh, what we're going to do about the publicity and stuff? So far, the, um, we're going to become very well. I know. We, we basically <laughs> figured that, that, you know, it is something that we have to cope with, that we can't say, oh, no, 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 it's very, no, that, that didn't happen. So that, that initially, I, I, I felt it was okay just as a thing to get people into reading something and maybe, maybe they'll find more out about the band. Now it's getting less and less all the time people are asking question, questions. I mean, people don't do it anymore. Hardly, and um, I think that uh, so at first it was it wasn't it, it was annoying, but we put up with it. And now we have to put up with it last. Kristen, did you watch last on TV? Did you know he was in? in he was oh. in the show. He was in the show. He he. My father credited him credited Christian with being the smartest guy in the whole goddamn series, and he only had <laughs> <had> time <laughs> to <laughs> on the scene. 
I talk a little bit about money. That was the only thing I said in the series. But we have to get some money. That is <laughs> with that. I still, still trying to get it. Though. Yeah, you still don't have it. Let me ask the young women question. A question. Oh. oh, which one is the bodyguard and which one is the roadie? Or uh, they both double. They alternate. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, Elizabeth, uh, are you ha, are you really a bodyguard? I mean, have you ever really had to do anything? Have you ever really had to turn anybody? What what, what was the most dangerous thing you had to do as a bodyguard for the most? I guess offer people rank away. <laughs> 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 what about when we went to Washington? Reactions from it? <laughs> we went to Washington and and. Um, I, I commissioned her to go over because we were at this club and they were treating us really terribly. And they, they treated us worse than they treated you. Uh, no, they really were pretty brutal. And so I, I actually had commissioned her to go over and take this tape from, from their little cassette player and they were playing all these tapes and they're all horrible except for they had one that was the Elvis Costello tape. And so I asked her to go over and get it. She almost lost her life to a seven foot tall Zulu guard who <laughs> laughed out once she had pocketed it. She gave it back and went to church. Seven duetas later, and look at her. Healthy. You two are sisters, isn't that yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, have you had any, what's you, your most exciting experience? I haven't had any exciting experiences with this band. Are you asexual? Except, are you, are you, are you Except no. for enlightenment. Yeah, the most dangerous experience we had was going to this little coffee shop in Washington at four in the morning with mini skirts on. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, it was in and the then black section. And then get home. And did they have to take oh, you? Uh, no, no, you know, no, we had to protect them. Of course, were you wearing the mini skirts or were you? No, we were. I was wearing one on my head at the, moment, at the time. Yeah, that no, was a silly night. No, we, it's usually we go into places and, and people always think that we are the uh, chicken pimps and these are our young girls until we have them s send them out in front to hit the people away. <laughs> <laughs> How did you two get involved with uh, these gentlemen? They're young, but they have taste. Well, uh, which one of you got involved first? Both at the same time. Really? How did it happen? Mutual friends? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just well, they, do you know, they, before I had even known them, I always, they, they were the girls who knew the lyrics to Crocodile Tears better than I did, because I was always forgetting them. And they'd be in the front row, and I'd be going, you bought the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, they, no, they're really helpful at the beginning with just lyrics. Now, I mean, we saw their band and we decided they uh, <laughs> not me, what? What do you ask for? You ask for just to be performers too? or? Yeah. yeah. They have their own group. Oh, what's the name of your group? Cardiac Arrest. Cardiac Arrest. Oh, do you want you to sing on the song? No. Oh, oh. When you sing your song, got our come on, please, please Uncle Lance. Come on, honey. I'll do a little song. What are you up for Christmas? I'm worth a lot of money, just like him. Who's the form of the group? Yes, we call called Money. Are you going to let the group open for you when they have it? Or are you kidding? Are you yes. Tell us no, we're going to let them open for us. Oh, what, are you gonna do if their, what are you going to do if their band gets a better offer before you, your band gets an offer? We're going to join their band. <laughs> <laughs> Cardiac mumps. <laughs> but, um, oh, we'll call it the diseases. <laughs> very false. Human frailties. Their but, father was a yeah. doctor. Yeah. And that, that's why we formed. What right. are you doing right now? No. Right now, <laughs> we're putting out a single. We're putting out a second single on Christian's label called Perfect Records, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be uh, 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 three songs: Rock and Roll This, Rock and Roll That, uh, Muscle Boys, and That Fatal Charm. And we are putting, you know, we're doing the the album cover. The album is going to be a. 12 inch single, we're doing the design, the artwork. That's another great thing about having a band is that you can really make it into a creative arts class. You can just do all these little art yeah. projects. Christian does great out the lead selects. Yeah. And uh, yes, the construction may have been the scissors. And the crayons. And uh, you make like great stick up posters and, and things when, when we play. And it's real good if you're nervous and you want something to do with your hand. A lot of creative energy and you can, it's a good excuse to do it, uh, channel that all into you. Do you live together as a group? Uh, no. Christian and I used to be roommates a, a couple years ago. But a pile of dirty dishes for all of us apart. <laughs> <laughs> it was too messy. We're not too big to be practical. Yeah. So you are clean, right? Uh, no, I know, but we learned uh, our lesson. Right. Let your bodyguard be really near there. I know, well she knows us better than anyone. I was clean. Who's the cleanest one in the band? Christian. Christian is. He taught everybody else behind your ears. Between your toes. Is he no. fanatically? Yeah. Yeah. I'm neurotically. Yeah. 
or erotic? Uh, erotically clean. Erotically. And is that like a point of view that you try to express through your music? Well, I try. I think having more than one person in a band makes cleanliness sort of difficult. But I think that it's not necessarily well, we're not clean. clean. You can think clean. Yes, I think that's it. I mean, sometimes you can't afford. Well, what's your reaction like, you know, to uh, like the culmination of the violence of some of the other New Age bands, like the Sid Vicious thing? Uh, did you have any reaction to that? Did you know him? Uh, no, I knew Nancy pretty well, but uh, she used to live below me. But that wasn't as much punk as it was lifestyle. There's been that sort of thing in all the regular rock bands and everything. There's always been scandal, and I think that attaching that to punk is like or a new wave is a bad thing for both of them. I think it was scandalous and it was interesting and it was sort of depressing. But that doesn't even have to do with a band. Everyone kills everyone, you know. You always <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a million heroin addicts in the yeah. world. Yeah, so and that's that the statistics, there's just gonna, a chance it's going to happen in something that's prominent. After that, have you, has your band ever been the object of audience violence? Have you ever been? Because oh, you ever, ever, ever? Let's see, we played, well, we played a lot of really crazy, crazy, uh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, it, well, we played in a lot of really crazy places, too. Like, we once played uh, somewhere in Long Island, across the street from a morch, uh, a, a graveyard, and we played underneath, right in front of the pool table, which they never stopped playing pool during the time, and a lot of people, and plus we were standing there, you know, facing, they're all chatting up girls and stuff, they're ready to kill us. They were like these As they're, I was seeing their face, face, and we did get a lot of audience violence that way. We didn't get, we haven't gotten any audiences that are all going out of control. But you have never seen a tambourine put the better use than when Lance beat them <laughs> up with his tambourine when they tried I used to, to take away the bar school. That that was was really oh, we played at the um, junior high school in Santa Barbara for a while. And it was right in, in the middle of my rousing version of Sympathy for the Devil. <laughs> when you have a great a timpani accompaniment and this black chick in front of me was going, Play the temptation, play the temptation, I hate this shit. And so she met the reen. <laughs> and we, we quit that, uh, that's one of the reasons we had to leave. <laughs>